Hey guys, in this video we're going to be having a look at the final figure from the DC Comics Multiverse Justice League line as we have a look at the robotic cyborg. Let's go ahead and see how tall Cyborg stands. Cyborg stands close to six and three quarters of an inch tall. Cyborg comes with the ever crucial piece for Steppenwolf. He comes with the arm. It looks like he's got a little bit of wear on the paint of the hand, unfortunately. But uh, again, nice, decent looking sculpted arm. We'll go ahead and reach off camera, grab Steppenwolf, and we'll go ahead and add the arm to the socket. Now I've noticed um, for starters, obviously he's a much taller figure. Let's put him right next to Cyborg so you guys can see the differencing between the two. There they are right there. Um, I do find though that the arms are really hard to snap into place, so I might have to add a little bit of extra pressure, make sure that everything's plugged into place before we have the review of Steppenwolf right around the corner. We'll just put him to the side. He also comes with this really cool looking axe. Not much, I have to say, in the way of paint. It really relies more on, uh, just a sculpted plastic that they used, but it has some exquisite looking details there. We'll obviously spend a lot more time looking at that when we have a look at Steppenwolf in the next review, so stay tuned for that. All right, so let's have a look at Cyborg, the final figure from the Justice League line of figures, and I have to say he looks pretty good. When I first saw Cyborg in the, I guess the first trailer of Justice League, I was really questioning myself as to why, ooh, I don't know if I like Cyborg in this movie, but surprisingly, the, was it the second or the third trailer came around where you see Cyborg getting into that bat vehicle and Alfred says, who is this? And he's like, I got this, Alfred. Basically, from that point on, I've been looking forward to seeing how Cyborg translates to the big screen. Before that, not so much. After that other trailer... Yeah, I think I think he's going to be a good addition to the Justice League team. Now, the figure here actually is pretty good overall. He's got some nice popping colors of silver here that really make this uh, this figure shine. Now, I don't know if it's just me though, and this is going to be a really old reference, so not not all the viewers are going to get this, but he kind of reminds me, especially the the, the texturing of the plastic. He kind of reminds me of an old rock lord. Like, I feel like I would be able to fold this guy up and he would just make this giant, uh, giant silver rock. Again, not, not all the younger viewers may get that reference, but it was a kind of a spin-off line from the Masters of the Universe line, which basically were these guys that, basically they were just shells. Like, you, you unhinge them, they have arms, legs, and a head, but you would, turn, you would fold them back up, they'd make a, like a little rock. So that kind of, that kind of where I get I get that feel when it comes to Cyborg here. He looks very much something like I would expect from a Rock Lord. Uh, the face sculpt is pretty good, all things considered. I think it looks really decent. I dare almost say that if this if the paint wasn't as shiny as it was and instead went more of a like even maybe like this color where there's very little effort that they put into other than just the plastic. If it was this color all around, I feel like I might have different feelings towards this figure than what I do. Maybe it's the silver that elevates it a little bit, that I'm looking at and really digging in the coloring and the sculpt and everything else, but paint could really be going a long way for me enjoying this figure. I, I, I don't know. There's the sculpting on the inside. He does have peg holes, which is something that Wonder Woman sadly did not come with. By the way, speaking of coming with, Cyborg comes with this neat blaster, this little blaster arm. And I guess technically you could use it on either arm because both arms do pull out. You can actually just detach either one of them. And this one is a little bit more difficult to get off. But uh, they both actually unhinge, unpeg, and you just simply just peg the cannon to, again, which, whichever arm that you want. Getting a bit of that tease from this one, I wish that they had given us another arm that you could have attached on this side, you know, if you wanted just to go all out. 
Um, I feel a little disappointed that you only get really the one instead of, you know, getting two different arm options. Or at the very least, if they had maybe given us two or three of these different arms of varying weapons and stuff that you could have mixed and matched depending on which one that you wanted. I probably will display him with this rather than the actual arm just because it, it looks different and it looks like something, you know, it just kind of elevates him a little bit more. Uh, and some nice detailing though, all around. S the sculpts on these, though the likenesses are questionable, this this head sculpt is actually one of the better ones. Um, nothing can be taken away from the sculpt that they put into the actual bodies. Especially like, especially Cyborg here, he's got a lot of cool little knickknacks, cool little small crevices where you, you see a lot of extra stuff going on here. I think the red also goes a long way too by jazzing it up so it's not just all silvers and grays. Again, digging the head sculpt. I think the head sculpt looks good. Different expressions certainly could have been appreciated as well, but it doesn't seem like a lot of these times these figures they give expressions to. Especially multiverse figures. They don't really give any real expressions to their faces. They get most of the time very neutral, closed mouth, very neutral eyes. And uh, unfortunately, not, I suppose not unfortunately, but Cyborg does kind of have that same problem. I feel like you can get away with it a little bit more on Cyborg, but maybe like a character like Flash or even Aquaman could have also given, could have given him a little extra oomph by incorporating some expression. Yeah, all around, I really I really do like this figure quite a bit. Posability, let's go through that together right now. Head rotates all the way around. Technically, it gets a little stiff, but you can technically rotate all the way around. Arms hinge outward, despite the fact that you would think that the size of his, his shoulder would limit the arms from moving outward. As you can clearly see, the proof is in the pudding. The arms do move outward. The arms rotate all the way around, as well as you got a rotation in the bicep, which is a little bit more obvious of a cut rather than something that transitions nicely. It just seems like it's a very obvious cut, but at least it rotates. You got your bend at the elbow. Uh, you don't actually rotate at the forearm. It's, it's just a hinge, but you do rotate at the hand, technically, of course, where the, the hand would detach uh, if you want to you know, put this over here sort of thing. Uh, he's got the waist swivel. He's got a forward and back motion and split on the leg. He's got a lower swivel right at the lower cut of the of the thigh, a single hinge knee, and then he's got a hinge in the foot. Ankle pivot? Ha <laughs> ha! No ankle pivot on this particular release. I had a feeling I was going to like the Cyborg, and now, after the review is all said and done, I walk away feeling like Cyborg was probably one of the strongest figures from this wave, right up there with the likes of Flash and Aquaman. The silver is certainly a nice touch, whereas if they had gone and kept with a neutral gray or something of a more matte look, I think it wouldn't have looked as good on the figure. I think really the sell for this figure is the really shiny silver that they've incorporated into the plastic. I like the interchangeable hand kind of feeling though that it could have been more and that we could have maybe got some extra arms as well. The one arm, you know, I do appreciate, but some extra cannons. Come on, Mattel, you could have thrown in some extra arm attachments. This is Cyborg, after all. And the whole thing about Cyborg is that he can morph his body and, and turn into different things that he uses. By throwing in just one arm cannon, I feel like they could have done a little bit more in that department. But overall, I really think that the Cyborg turned out quite good, and he might make very well my top three favorite figures from this line. Did he make the top three? And how did Steppenwolf turn out? Well, you guys will have to stay tuned for the next video as we're going to have a look at the Collect and Connect Steppenwolf from the Justice League line. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. If you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe to this channel, hit that little subscribe button down below. And don't forget to select, it's right down below here, select that little bell option, which you, you can turn on the notifications for this channel so you'll always know when new videos are coming up. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you next time.